All right, here we go. Question number 14 of our college algebra homework number seven in my lab math. They give us a system of linear equations and they want us to solve using Gaussian elimination with back substitution. Notice the first thing they want from us is they want us to rewrite the matrix in row echelon form. So what I'm going to do up here in this window is show you how we can go from the equations to the matrix and then to row echelon form, okay? So the first thing that you want to make sure of before you write the matrix is you want to make sure that every column has the same variable. You want to make sure that all your letters are lined up and in alphabetical order going across. And on the other side of the equal sign, only constants. So you've got, you've got your X's, your Y's, your Z's, and your constants. This is the format that your equations have to be in in order for you to write the matrix, okay? So here we go. Let's get rid of all of this junk. And let's write the matrix. So we're going to have a set of brackets. And our, remember the vertical line represents the equal signs here. And then we're going to take the first equation and construct our first row. That's going to be 4, 2, negative 3, 9. Next row is going to be 1, 4, 1, 25. And last but not least, we have 1, negative 3, 0, negative 3. Remember, if you're missing a variable, there's here there's no Z, you need a zero placeholder. So this is our augmented matrix. Now we're going to go to row echelon form. And I guess it would be nice if you actually know what row echelon form means. Like, what does that look like? So if you have a matrix in row echelon form, what you're going to notice is that you're going to have ones on the major diagonal. Going down, these will all be ones. And everything below that diagonal will be a zero. So this is the goal. This is the format, the setup that we need to achieve in order to be in row echelon form. Okay, so again, let's get rid of all that. And let's see, the first thing that I need is I need a 1 in this box, okay? So what I can do is I can do a row swap. You're allowed to use any row operation. There are only three row operations, though. There's a row swap, there's row multiplication, and then there's row multiplication with addition. So there's three row operations. And the first row operation I'm going to use is a row swap. I'm going to take row 1 and row 3, and I'm going to swap them. So here we go. In the new matrix, 1, negative 3, 0, negative 3. Notice what happened there is that row 3 now becomes row 1. And then row 1 is going to become row 3. Row 2 is going to stay where he is. So then we'll have 1, 4, 1, 25. And then 4, 2, negative 3, 9. So do you see what that achieves? That gets me a 1 in the upper left-hand corner, which is what I needed. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to turn the 1 and the 4, I need those to turn into zeros. So that is my next objective, is to get the 1 and the 4 to become zeros, and we're going to do that using row operations, okay? So let's do this. Let's select this, and let's move that over. And then let's go here. We're going to do... To get this to be a zero, 
we're going to do negative 1 times row 1 plus row 2 to get a new row 2. And to get the 4 to become a 0, we're going to do negative 4 times row 1 plus row 3 to get a new row 3. So we're going to do two row operations at the same time to get a new matrix, okay? So I'm going to try to fit this all into one screen here so you can see it. Okay. So what I want you to notice here is that row 2 and row 3 are going to change. So for row 1, we can simply copy and paste. And then we're going to execute the first row operation, which is to take negative 1, multiply by every element of row 1, adding to the corresponding element in row 2 to make a new row 2. All right, let's go. Negative 1 times 1, that's negative 1. And then negative 1 plus 1 is going to make 0. Okay, so it's almost like I'm doing the distributive property. The distributive property, the negative one gets multiplied by the one, and then whatever that is, we add it to the corresponding element in row two. Okay. All right. So next, now we're going to do negative one times negative three, and whatever that is, we're going to add it to four. So that's going to be three plus four is seven. Okay, next, negative 1 times 0, well that's 0, and then 0 plus 1 is 1. And then we're going to go negative 1 times negative 3, which is 3, plus 25 is 28. And so there is our first row operation done. And there's our new row two. Now, for the next row operation, we're going to take negative four times everybody in row one. We're going to add that to the corresponding element in row three to produce a new row three. Here we go. Negative four times one. Negative four times one is negative four. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So do you see what happened? We're doing row 1 and then adding to row 3. Next, negative 4 times negative 3, which is 12, added to 2 is 14. Next, negative 4 times 0. Well, that's 0. Added to negative 3 is negative 3. And last but not least, we have negative 4 times negative 3, which is 12. 12 plus 9 is 21. And so there is our new row 3. Now, what I'd like to do is stop and check our progress. This is where we're at, and then these are the answer choices, okay? So do any of these look out of place? Can we toss out any of these? Well, look at this first row. 1, negative 3, 0, negative 3. We can throw out answer choice A because this is backwards. So A is eliminated. And as far as the rest of these go, I don't see any anything to exclude any of these three. So now we've eliminated one. So let's continue the process of trying to achieve row echelon form, okay? So the next thing that I would like to do, let's see. I think it's going to be easiest if we try to get this 14 to become a zero. Let's see if we can do that. 
And the row operation that we're going to use to achieve that is negative 2 times row 2 plus row 3 to get a new row 3. Okay? Now here's what I noticed. I noticed that if I multiply negative 2 times 7, that's going to make negative 14 which if I add that to 14, it'll give me a zero there. And remember, I do need a zero in that position if I want to get to row echelon form. All right, so here we go. Let's see what's going to happen. It looks like row three is going to change. So what does that say about rows one and two? They're going to stay the same. So let's start by just doing a little copy and paste. Row 1 and 2, we can just copy and paste those. And now we're going to execute the row operation. Here we go. Negative 2 times 0, which is 0, and then 0 added to 0. Look at that. It keeps my 0, which I needed a 0 there. So that's nice. Okay, next. We're going to take negative 2 times 7, which is negative 14, added to 14 gives me a 0, which I needed. Next, we're going to take negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, added to negative 3 gives me negative 5. And then last but not least, we can do negative 2 times 28, which is a negative 56. And I'm going to have to grab my handy dandy calculator. Negative 56 added to 21 gives me negative 35. And so that completes the row operation. And then if we take a quick look at where we're at, we can see that this major diagonal, remember that needs to be all ones. But look what we have. Everything below that is a zero, which is what we needed. Okay, so now the last step is to get the seven and the negative five in the diagonal. We need those to be ones. So let's see what we can do to get that. Piece of cake. Let's do row 2 multiplied by 1 seventh. That'll get us a new row 2. And let's do row 3 divided by negative 5 to get us a new row 3. Okay? And if you'll notice, these are both valid row operations. Uh, remember I said that row multiplication is a valid row operation. And this second row operation where it says row 3 divided by negative 5, well, that could be the same as multiply by negative 1 fifth. So I can actually do multiply or divide, and it's still a valid row operation. And so let's see what our new matrix is going to look like. Here we go, right in the matrix here. Notice that row 2 and row 3 are going to change. So row 1, we can copy and paste. Okay. Row 2, every element of row 2 is going to be multiplied by 1 seventh. So here we go, all the way over to the whole freaking row, even the 0, okay? 0 times 1 seventh is 0. 7 times 1 seventh is 1. 1 times 1 seventh is 1 seventh. And then 28 right here, 28 times 1 seventh is 4. And if you need to use your calculator to check that, go right ahead. Next, let's take row 3 and divide everybody by negative 5. So in row 3 here, we've got 0 divided by negative 5 is 0. That takes care of him. 
Next, again, we have 0 divided by negative 5, which is 0. Takes care of him. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. And then negative 35 divided by negative 5, negative over a negative makes a positive, 7. And so I don't know if you noticed or not, but we now have all ones on the diagonal. Everything below the diagonal is 0. And so we should be able to pick the right answer as far as which one is row echelon form. So it's either B, C, or D. And it looks like... Is it just me, or do C and D look the same? 1, negative 3, 0, negative 3, 0, 1, 1 seventh, and 4, 0, 0, 1, and C and D are identical. That's crazy. Well, let's check. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay, and then the solution set is, so I'm supposed to be able to go from this now to the answers. Uh, <clears throat> remember back up here where it said with back substitution? And so that's now what I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate how you can go from row echelon form to the solution with back substitution. And so what we want to do, we want to start with the bottom row, and we want to translate that back into an equation. So we have no x, no y, 1z, which is just z, Remember, the vertical bar here means equal, 7. And so that tells me that z is 7. So in our ordered triple, this is going to be alphabetical order, x, y, z. And z is going to be 7. Okay, I know that. Now, the reason they call it back substitution is we're now going to take this answer for z. We're going to go back to the previous row. And we're going to translate that back into an equation. Okay, so we have no x. We have 1y plus 1 seventh z. But remember, z is 7, so we can plug that in for z. And that's going to equal 4. And then I should be able to solve for y. y plus 7 times a seventh is 1. Moving the 1 over makes it minus. Y is 3. And so now we can plug that into my lab math. And now for X. Okay, so now we're going to go back up to the top row. And we're going to translate that back into an equation. Okay, so I'm going to have 1X minus 3Y. I'm not going to have any Z equals negative 3. Okay, so that's going to be x minus 3y equals negative 3. Oh, but I know what y is. Remember, y is 3. So x minus 3 times 3 equals negative 3. x minus 9 equals negative 3. Moving the 9 over. Combine like terms. And we get our x value. And then we can check that. Man, what a long problem. I hope any of that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.